Welcome to another video. I am the Starman, and if you saw my last video, I managed to find and photograph Comet C2022 E3 ZTF. That's the comet that's in the news at the moment. It's in our night skies, and you can spot it if you know where to look. I'll put a map on the screen a bit later. Anyway, that video has gone on to get over 50,000 views. I can't believe it. 50,000 views. It's by far my biggest video I've ever done. And I've been doing this since 2018. Five years I've been doing this channel for, and that's my biggest video to date. So if you saw that video and you subscribed to the channel, I want to welcome you to my channel. If you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe. If you want to find out more about photographing the night sky, photographing the Milky Way, the moon, anything astronomy related, even if you're not a photographer, subscribe to the channel because there's lots out there on this channel to make people aware of what's up there in the night sky. And if there's anything going on like a meteor shower or at the moment we've got this comet, Comet ZTF in our skies at the moment, I'll show you how you can find it and also how you can photograph it. Now what I want to do is I want to try and make things fairly simple on this channel. You can get bogged down by technical details when you're doing this sort of thing. People have some very fancy equipment and what I want to do is try to make it as easy as possible. I want to try and start from the beginning say you've got an old camera or something like that and it, or you've got say a mobile phone that's all you've got I want to try and appeal to those people as well now I managed to get the picture of the comet using this camera here it's, it's quite a good camera it's a Nikon D850 but I've got a 50 millimeter lens on it and I managed to get a photograph of it just using this camera here so you don't need anything too fancy and it was just on a tripod now you can go out and photograph it yourself. It's bright enough to photograph. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be naked. I'm not sure if it's going to be naked eye. It's going to reach its closest approach on February the 2nd. So if you're watching that before February the 2nd, you get to see it at its closest approach. And you might just be able to see it with the naked eyes, but I do advise that you use binoculars to look for it. It won't be too far away from the North Star, but it will have passed the Earth at that point and it will be on its way back out of the solar system again. So like I say, in the last video, I managed to capture a picture of it just using this camera here on a tripod. Now in this video, I want to take things a little bit further and I want to go back out to my dark sky site which is about half an hour away from Blackpool in England which is where I live and if anyone knows Blackpool it's the Las Vegas of the UK it's the number one seaside resort in the UK and as you can imagine there's a lot of light pollution where we are here in Blackpool so I, whenever I do astronomy if ever I want to capture something that's faint or anything like that that's fuzzy, like a galaxy or the Milky Way, I have to travel out of town at least half an hour or something like that to get to some dark skies. And that's what I have to do for this comet. Now, I'm not saying you won't be able to see it from the town. I mean, there is a chance if you've got binoculars and you know where to look. I'll put a map on the screen now, just in case we're, we're still in the time. If you're watching this in the time when the comet is still in our skies, just to give you an idea of where it might be. It will be closer to the North Star on the 31st of January. So there's a good chance to see it if, you, if you're still before that date and you're watching this video. I want to take things a little bit further and I want to use this device here. Now this is a tracking device. Now I will be doing a special video on how to set these up a bit later on. But for this video, I'm going to be taking this tracking device. Now, this is a portable tracking mount. And what it does is it enables me to put this on the tripod, to put the camera on top of it, and it enables me to take longer exposures of the night sky and eliminate any of the star trailing that you normally get when you do a long exposure with your camera on a tripod. The Earth rotates, and as it rotates, the stars appear to move across the sky. It's all to do with the movement of the Earth, of course. But as you take a long exposure, you get these star trails, which are actually pretty good, and star trails are great photographs. But when we're photographing something like a comet or, or something like that deep space object, we want to use something like this, and it'll stop the trailing of the stars, and then we can take a longer exposure of the comet. Now, I'm going to be using this lens here. It's a... A 300 millimeter lens, it's not even a new lens. It's, this is about 15 years old. It's a 300 millimeter F4 lens. And I'm going to be using this to photograph the comet, just like I did in the last, in the last video, the one that's got over 50,000 views, except I will have it on this device here. I'm gonna head off there now to the dark sky site. I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna polar align it with the North Star so that when I put my camera on top, we can take long exposures and Let's see how I do. 
Okay, so I'm now back at the Dark Sky site here in the Forest of Boland in Lancashire, about 10 miles away from Blackpool. And as I said before, it's very important that you get away from streetlights if you possibly can, if you want to see this comet. I mean, there is a chance of seeing it from the garden, but uh, if you can just get away from any kind of lights, go out to the country, if you get a chance, it'll really, really help you. Anyway, I've come back here again. I'm not quite at the same place where I was before. I'm actually a little bit exposed. I'll have to show you around. I'm quite a bit higher up here. I reckon I'm about a thousand feet above sea level. I can see all around, and this car park where I am now is quite treacherous with ice, and uh, I didn't, I couldn't go to the other car park where we were parked before which is a bit more sheltered than this one because there was a camper van parked there and I thought if I park there and start setting up and looking for this comet and then when I see the comet I get all excited and shout I've got the comet I've got the comet I'll be waking them up in the camper van they'll be wondering what's going on won't they so anyway I come up to this one and, uh, and anyway I'll just show you around and then I'll get set up and see if we can find this comet and get a picture of it with my telephoto lens on the tracking mount it'd be pretty awesome hope I can find it because it'll have moved a bit since last time okay I'm not sure if this shows up on the camera this small camera I'm using but we're looking down towards a file there that's where I came from over there Blackpool in that area there I and mean, I can see Orion going down over there it looks absolutely spectacular it is super clear and I'm glad I came here tonight because it's not looking very clear for the next week or so so I had to make use of tonight whilst it's super clear but you can see it you might be able to see a glow sorry that it might look a little bit grainy but over there is the glow of Lancaster yeah but we're not actually looking that way we're actually looking towards this way sort of towards where my light is on the van now we're looking towards the northeast up here look at this wow look at this it's deadly in here you know and I did say that the car park where I parked last time was uh, very sheltered and there was no ice in there like this one but anyway just over here you'll see that I've got my camera there it is there and you can see that it's pointing upwards I haven't aligned it yet what I've done is I've just put the camera on there and it's on it's on the tracker as you can see I'll come around this way I'll show you there's the tracker there the four nats tracker and I've only really roughly aligned it at the moment I've, I've done a very very rough alignment and pointed the camera in the general direction of where I think the comet is. Now I need to polar align it properly by looking through that scope there. You see that scope there? That's the polar alignment. I need to get the North Star in that scope there and put it in a particular position and then I can then manoeuvre the camera around and hopefully we'll find the comet. OK, now I'm going to have to have a look at the map of where the comet is at the moment. It's moved on quite a bit from where it was last time. So I'm going to have to try and find out and see if I can see a star up there. Unfortunately, I've looked at the map and um, there's no bright star anywhere near where the comet is. It's tracking in between Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, and Ursa Minor, where it'll end up near the... North Star but at the moment it seems to be in a real dead part of the sky so I'm going to have to manoeuvre the camera around and see if I can get it on the screen hopefully I will do so what I've done is I've set the ISO very high to something like 12,800 and that'll mean that I can use a short exposure using this lens at f4 it's an f4 300 millimeter lens and if the comet is in the field of view I will be able to see it with a very short exposure of say about four seconds or something like that and that'll mean that I'll have more chances to move the camera around a bit and hopefully I'll be able to find it in the frame it could be a bit difficult but I'm going to try it now and let's see if I can get it on this shot. Okay, now I am taking four second exposures at 12,800. That shot there, and it's not in the frame. I would be able to, can you see how it's all shaking all over the place? It doesn't really matter too much about that because all I'm trying to do is locate the comet and hopefully I'll be able to get it. Right, okay, I just took a shot there and I can't see it in the frame there. So it looks like I'm going to have to keep trying.
Don't end the shot on that one. Oh, I think we might be onto something. I don't know if you can see right down in this bottom corner here, but I think I can see something right down in that bottom corner. Can you see that? I think the comet is there. Let's see if I can straighten this up. Oh, almost. It's just at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. The comet is now straight at the bottom. So all I have to do is lift up the camera a little bit to get it in the centre. We've got it, folks. Well, there you go. We've got it. There it is. I've got the comet in the centre of the frame now. There it is there. Doesn't it look amazing? This is just a test shot at ISO 12. 1800 and about four seconds exposure but there you go i've got it in the center of the frame and now it's time to start the tracker and set the exposure so now that i've found the comet and got it in the center of the frame we can start the tracker going i can line the tracker up properly with the north star and then I'm going to take exposures of 30 seconds. That's going to be my maximum exposure. And the ISO is going to be 3200. So 30 seconds, ISO 3200, 300 millimeter lens at F4. That is the exposure that I'm going to use. Now, I want to take at least 20 frames. I'm not going to be here all night. I'm going to take at least 20 frames and hopefully I'll be able to stack those when I get home and improve the picture rather than just take a single exposure. I'm going to stack at least 20 frames together and hopefully I'll end up with a really, really nice picture of the comet. Okay, check this out. Look at this now. It's all lined up and tracking and you'll notice if I put this picture on the screen now, doesn't that look absolutely amazing? I mean, it looks amazing on the screen, but check this out. This is my first picture using the tracker there. Notice how the stars are all solid. And remember as well that the comet is moving against the stars. It's not moving with the stars. It's moving it on its own way. But look at that. I've got a picture of it, folks. Absolutely amazing. That's a single picture of the comet. I'm glad I found it because it was a little bit difficult to find to be quite honest and I thought I was going to struggle but there you go I got it. Okay so I'm now sat in the star bus having a cup of tea after that uh, finding the comet and I set my camera up to take multiple exposures. I want at least 20 images I reckon to put through the stacker but I think it should look pretty good after it's come out of there. Anyway, it's absolutely freezing up here now. I'm, I'm gonna be heading home now because uh, I'm cold and it's, I'm very, very lonely up here. There's nobody else up here. I haven't got anybody with me this time. I had Frank with me last time. Frank in Blackpool, who was helping me with the camera work and the lighting on the last video. But anyway, I hope you like this video and I hope it's been helpful to you to find this amazing comet ZTF that's in our skies at the moment and I hope I've given you some ideas on how to take pictures of it. I might have another go at it for my garden, but hopefully these pictures here will be my main pictures of the comet because I'm not sure if I'm going to get another chance with the weather the way it is. And I'm going to put the edited picture on at the end of this video. Anyway, I hope you like this video and happy comet hunting. <laughs>